So I want to share some really interesting pilot or preliminary data showing that transcranial focused ultrasound can reduce chronic pain. So a couple weeks ago, I talked about my interest in using transcranial ultrasound to treat fibromyalgia and ME-CFS and related pain and fatigue conditions. And I'll include a link to that video at the end of this one. So check that out if you want more background info on how it works. The general idea is that if we send uh, ultrasound beams through the brain at different angles, we can change neuronal and microglia function at the point where they intersect. Now, someone in the comments recommended a paper from the University of Utah, and they tested this idea in a small clinical trial in people with chronic pain. And the results are, I think, pretty impressive. So I thought I would tell you about the results and what they may mean if you're suffering from chronic pain or chronic fatigue and related issues. I'm going to go over the main points only. I don't really have all of my voice today, and so I'm going to keep this pretty short. But this is an open access paper, so you can read it yourself to get all the details, and you can find a link in the description below to access that paper. So this trial had about 20 people with chronic pain. About half of those people met criteria for fibromyalgia, but some of them had chronic fatigue syndrome, they had migraine um, conditions, they had various neuropathic uh, diseases, and so there were a, it was a large number of chronic conditions that were being studied here, but they all had some type of chronic pain that was not treated effectively by other means. So here's the study design, and this is called a crossover design where you're randomized to receive the real treatment or sham, which is fake treatment, and then later you're switched to the other. So if you receive sham the first time, you'll get the real treatment the second time. And the sham is constructed in a way where you aren't supposed to be able to tell if you're getting the real or the fake treatment. So people first had an MRI brain scan, which provides a brain map for targeting the precise spot they want to hit with the ultras, with the focused ultrasound beams. And that took about an hour to do the MRI, which is pretty typical. And then they had a 40 minute focused ultrasound session in their brain. Then they did seven days of tracking how their pain did, you know, for a week after the treatment. Then they were switched to the other condition and they received a second 40 minute session. Then they had seven more days of tracking their uh, pain severity. Now, the region they targeted was the pregenual and subgenual anterior cingulate cortex. And if you remember from my talk a couple weeks ago, I said if I could target only one region for pain and fatigue, I would hit this spot of the subgenual anterior cingulate cortex. And this group obviously felt the same way because they hit that same region, which I was excited to see. Now, they actually targeted eight different specific spots, and you can see the X's here that show those specific spots. And that makes sense. Uh, it makes sense to cover your bases when you're getting started. But of course, it'll be interesting later to see which of these regions were most driving the clinical effects, because I bet some of these specific locations are more important than others. So to the results, Directly after the treatment, we see powerful reductions of pain. The sham treatment showed less than 20% pain reduction, uh, which we assume is placebo effect. But the real treatment had 60% reduction of pain, and that is quite impressive. And you can also see the individuals marked by these circles that show that several people had even greater reductions of pain, including some people with complete resolution of their pain right after the treatment. Although we do have to note that a couple people also had complete reduction of their pain with the sham treatment as well. And I'll have to look at that data if, if I'm able to get it. This is another research group, but I would have to look at those data and find out why those two individuals might have had complete pain reduction with sham. And we may be able to tell that by looking at the data, but we won't know until we uh, are able to see that. In any case, the difference between real and sham treatment is very clear from the results, from the data, and from these figures. 
Uh, so there's no doubt that after receiving real focused ultrasound of the anterior cingulate cortex, the pain is reduced in the majority of these individuals. So that's, that's great. That's what we want to see. Now, there's a huge question about durability of the treatment. How long does it last? It's not helpful if it only works for an hour after the session. So looking at the seven-day data, we see that there is indeed some durable response, and the treatment is the one in blue, the sham is in red. So we can see that you know the most powerful effect is right, off, right after the treatment, and we can see a loss of treatment efficacy over time, like a slow reduction of the efficacy. But at seven days, there's still a pretty significant reduction of pain. Uh, so given this is a first attempt, I think this is very respectable results. And there are many ways that we may be able to improve the clinical benefit. Uh, repeated sessions is an obvious one. Um, you might have remembered that last or a couple of weeks ago, I mentioned that there uh, are groups working on at-home ultrasound devices that you can wear while you're sleeping. And so you can have kind of uh, additional sessions um, every day or every other day or a couple of times a week. And that may keep the efficacy going for a much longer period of time. Now, these things are not available yet. They're still being researched and developed. So that's another way that we may be able to get better clinical benefits. There are all sorts of parameters that can be changed to increase the benefit. Um, there may be focusing on specific brain regions um, instead of hitting eight different regions, focusing on a couple of them may yield better results and having different protocols for different pain conditions. Remember, these were all sorts of pain conditions, and it may be that this particular protocol would help some pain conditions, but other pain conditions need a different protocol and they need different targets. Uh, to be hit with the ultrasound. So there's so many things. There's really dozens of ways um, and dozens of um, kind of modifications that should be tested to really optimize the clinical effect. It's, it is unlikely that this is the strongest effect because this is just the first thing they tried. So we really need to try all these different um, variable approaches and see if some minor changes could lead to really improved uh, benefits. So anyway, this is uh, exciting. I think it really hints at a big opportunity for managing pain. I think this is a well-designed study and the results look solid and they look believable. So this is a great starting point. Uh, the one thing I would have liked to have seen would have been the effects on fatigue uh, because I suspect this would work for MECFS and related conditions. But that wasn't the purpose of the study, so there was no reason for them to look at that outcome. It just means that we need to do a separate study to examine conditions like MECFS. So that's the update. I just wanted to show some exciting results. I'm still examining my options in the field of focused ultrasound, focused you know, transcranial ultrasound, including the main decision, which is what device to use now that there's quite a few options for us uh, researchers. And I'll keep you up to speed on this channel. I'll, I'll let you know when I choose something. I'll let you know when we've gotten through all the regulatory stuff and we're ready to start uh, studies. So thanks for listening, and I will be back soon. Bye.